All right, as I mentioned, this is our second webinar in our Camp Ross webinar series um, and just chatting amongst ourselves in the room and how this is gonna be pretty much a monthly event. So we're excited to, uh, for this to continue to develop. Um, but if you missed our first webinar, it was all about Camp Ross um, and just how to um, you know, talk to your, your pack about Camp Ross um, and, and really a, a how-to guide, if you will, in video form. Uh, so if you missed that, uh, that's available on the Goshen Scout Reservation page as well as uh, the council blog spot, weownadventure.com. Uh, looks like the number of people that are joining us have kind of trickled off, but you know, uh, you're know, you welcome to, to keep on joining as we come along. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, good evening, my name is Elizabeth <clears throat> Warren. I'm the director of the Goshen Scout Reservation, uh, which means that I oversee all of the summer camps and programs at the Goshen Scout Reservation uh, year round, including Camp Ross. Uh, very lucky to be joined here today by um, a few guests. Uh, we have Sarah Moses, our uh, NCAC camping specialist, and then we have Claire Davis and Spencer Clark, who are both uh, pack leaders and cub parents here in National Capital Area Council. But I'm going to give um, everybody uh, you know, some time to introduce themselves and talk to us. So, uh, Spencer, why don't you get started? Well, hello and good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Spencer Clark. I am the Cub Master of PAC 205 in Tacoma Park, Maryland, in the White Oak District. So I've been in this role for about seven years, and I took our kids to Camp Ross for the first time uh, when my oldest son was a wee below back in 2019, I think it was. Um, so it's fun, and I've been to Ross three times um, in total now, and I've also been to a couple of the other camps around at Goshen. Uh, but I think it's a great experience, and I'm really glad to be here to share a bit of that tonight. Thank you, and over to you, Claire. Hello, I'm Claire Davis. I'm Cub Master of PAC 278, which is located in Braddock Heights, Maryland, Francis Scott Key District. I have also been to Goshen three times. Um, mine started all um, post-COVID, so I've only been since then, but I love going to Ross, and I've also been to some of the other camps around the lake as well. And Claire's uh, showcasing her Goshen Scout Reservation sweatshirt. There you go. <laughs> uh, a hot commodity. We'll be getting a few more of those in uh, maybe a different design for 2025. So you'll also get another sweatshirt. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to do a quick overview for, or, oh, Sarah, I briefly introduced you. Do you have anything to say for them, <laughs> for everybody? Um, not necessarily. This, uh, So I'm the camping specialist. If you have any registration questions throughout the year, I'm kind of your go-to person for that. So back to you, Elizabeth. Great. Well, I wanted to do a very brief overview about Camp Ross. I mentioned as people were joining, um, this is the second installment of our webinar series just about Camp Ross. And really what our goal is, is to um, introduce units to what type of summer camping programs are available for their Cub Scouts. Uh, here at Camp Ross, we are a, a week-long Cub Scout summer camp specifically for your rising Weeblos and Arrow of Light Scouts. So that means anybody that is entering the fourth or fifth grade in the fall. So when we've been sending out email communication, that's gone to our current Bear and Weeblos leaders because they will be the future rising Weeblos and Arrow of Light Scouts. Um, if you missed our first webinar that talks all about, you know, Camp Ross basics, um, as well as goes over a Camp Ross toolkit. So it's promotional materials, um, how-to guides, um, that is available on our website at www.gotogoshen.org. Um, so really what this is, you know, the last webinar, we kind of had a presentation. Uh, we're going to change it up a little bit. And today is just going to be a conversation, uh, you know, with Spencer and Claire as people that have been to Camp Ross a few times. And uh, a little orientation for the people that are, uh, you know, joining us, um, you know, on video would be that there is a uh, Q&A section. Um, so if you have any questions throughout uh, this webinar, please go ahead and put that in the Q&A area. Um, if there's something that you're like, yeah, the water trampoline's great, you can type that into the chat part, uh, area. Um, and Sarah Moses will be helping us to navigate those, those questions um, as they come. All right, well, um, Claire and Spencer, I'm not gonna tell you when you need to answer or anything, but just jump in as you, uh, as you feel inclined to. And we'll start with our first question. So you both have been to Camp Ross several times, you know, different years. Um, I've met you both uh, um, more recently over the last two years. Can you share with me 
your scouts or maybe even your favorite memory at Camp Ross? Um, it is definitely hard to pick <laughs> just one or even a couple of memories that are our favorites. Um, but I will say there is there are kind of two different things when I think of as our favorite parts. Um, one of it would be, you know, obviously the times there with the programming and um, when you're there with your kids, seeing them develop some new skill or, you know, overcome some challenge, conquer some fear that they have. And um, I swear every year, every scout, there, there's something um, that they learn. And I think seeing that smile and pride that, that comes from them, you know, the first time that they jumped in a lake <laughs> or, you know, passed the BSA swim test. Um, those are some of my favorite parts. Of course, there's a lot of, um, you know, fun parts with the staff, you know, be it skits and whatever. Um, but also some of my favorite moments, honestly, just been the times when we're um, away on our own as a pack, like when we've hiked up to Viewing Rock. Um, it's kind of a long hike. It's steep, but, you know, not terrible. And then you get to the top and you have a great view over the whole um, Goshen Reservation. And I think, you know, having that moment and I think the kids seeing um, kind of the beauty of where they are, having taken on a big challenge and then just, you know, being able to relax and take in that view. Um, honestly, that's been one of my you know favorite moments from Ross when you get that that high perspective and really see what the, the kids can do and have those real bonding moments um, with the kids in your pack. Yeah, I agree. I It was hard to pick um, just one. Um, but as Spencer mentioned, having the kids overcome challenge, my older son, he's deathly afraid of heights um, and also has some mobility challenges. Um, and the monkey bridge, it's not that high, but for him, that monkey bridge was so scary in the pioneering area, but all the staff rallied behind him and they cheered for him and they supported him and they helped him get up on the monkey bridge. He only made it about halfway down his first year, but the next year when he came back, he was ready. He got on and he did the whole monkey bridge. So just having that. Um, and then also Spencer mentioned with the staff, that's my favorite memory. Having gone three years, there are certain staff members that I've now grown to know. And it's really, I get excited when I pull into the camp parking lot and I see the staff that I've seen grow over the years and I get to check in with them and it's a really cool experience as well. Yeah, on that, I definitely enjoyed getting to know some of them. I know the first year I went to Ross, um, Drew Gershorn, the director at Ross, uh, was the nature director um, and he just had so much joy and enthusiasm. You know, he, he loves the kids and, you know, his joy is completely infectious. And so, you know, after the pandemic, when we came back and I found that he had taken over as the camp director, uh, I was so excited because he really makes it fun. He cares so much. And so it's fun to kind of like come back and see there's always some new staff every year, but there's some returning ones as well. And so um, it's always blast to kind of reconnect and, you know, get to re-experience those good times together. Yeah, camp as a whole is absolutely a community. Um, I, I think I've shared with both of you that I attended Goshen Scout Reservation as a scout before I started being a staff member there. Um, and we use Drew as an example. I know that he went to Camp Ross and said, well, one day I want to work here. And and unlike at, at a Scouts BSA camp where, okay, if they're 14, you can kind of join in as a CIT, a counselor in training the following year. At Camp Ross, you don't really get that same type of um you know, we, we take people on at the age of nine or 10 if we could, but <laughs> we're not going to do that. Um, so it's, it's wonderful to, to really develop that sense of community. And I know they look forward to seeing, you know, returning leaders like yourselves as well. Well, staying on the memory lane, um, what about a, a funny story? Maybe one that, you know, you think about and you chuckle about when you think about Camp Ross. So I don't know if other people will find this one funny. It hopefully it doesn't turn anybody away from Ross. But my son's favorite story is when they found a rat snake in the campsite because um, they just thought it was so cool that they got to call for Jack to come from nature and collect it. And then they named the snake Jack and getting to visit with it all week long and brag that, you know, oh, that's the snake that we found in our site. So Hopefully nobody's watching this is afraid of snakes, 
it was a rat snake and everybody, you know, the staff came and handled it very quickly. So everybody was safe. Um, but my kids, that's still their brag moment that they tell to all the kids. And it actually gets a lot of our scouts excited because they want to come and they want to find a critter in their camp too. But it's fun. <laughs> I know one year too, we found a turtle like on our orientation walk at the beginning and they were so excited to name it. Um, so they picked it up and I think it peed on one of us. So that was fun. It wasn't me. <laughs> but yeah, we had to get them. Um, and yeah, it's fun. Then you get to visit them later in the turtle pit. So they'll keep them for a little bit of time before releasing them so that you can um, observe them. And yeah, it's fun to be able to get the chance to name them if you find it. Um, I will say some of the, the fun moments in camp come from the theme. So every year they've got um, some kind of camp theme. And I don't know who writes it. I don't know if it changes at all week to week. Um, there's definitely some things that are seem a bit improvised, which is part of the fun of it too. Um, but so every morning and evening, uh, the staff, when you're running up at at flags will have some part of a scheme and there's a story that unfolds throughout the week which is usually quite humorous and i know one year they had um the vikings they were not vikings because they only had one horn on their hat and like the kids loved it and you know all throughout the day they'd be like hey you're the viking and of course when they're not doing the skit the staff are like what are you talking about i'm not there um, but so it's really fun to see the kids, you know, get invested in the storyline and, you know, eager to see what's going to happen next night or the next morning. Sometimes we have to warn our staff of whatever jokes you're going to tell at like opening campfire on Sunday or during those first few skits, you need to be prepared to hear it for the rest of the week. Um, so choose wisely on what you, you say to the scouts because well, they'll hear it. Um, we do some exciting, uh, plans for our theme for 2025, but we're not going to release it yet. So I'll leave you in suspense. Um, all right. Well, during our last webinar, again, I mentioned that was more of a general overview of Camp Ross and, and we got into some specifics about program, but but nothing too, too detailed. Um, for your pack, could you tell me about what a typical day at Camp Ross is like? For sure. So when you get to Ross, your first two days, um, of course, Sunday is getting in and getting set up. And then Monday and Tuesday programming starts, and that's programmed out for you the first two days. Um, after that, and you'll learn quickly on Monday, you know, you want to talk to your scouts and figure out what you want to request for um, Wednesday through Friday. So each day will look a little bit different. Um, but typically in the morning, you're going to you know wake up, get yourself ready get to flags in front of the dining hall. Again, there's a, a welcome, a big cheer, uh, and there's usually the skit and announcements. Um, then you head into the dining hall for breakfast. After grace, you clean up, and then you've got program blocks in the morning and uh, in the afternoon. So for about an hour, you've got three more or less one hour blocks in the morning and three in the afternoon where you rotate essentially through all of the different program areas. At Ross. So the first two days you get a flavor of what all of them are um, and then you can choose kind of which ones you want to do uh, going forward in um, your final three days. And of course the first night there's a big opening campfire where there's a good show that the staff put on and then you've got a closing campfire at the end as long as there's no rain. Otherwise you get to do it inside which happens. Yeah that's Pretty much most of the day. The only other things I'd add in is obviously uh, there's definitely lots of slushy runs uh, anytime the shop is open. So the kids love the slushies. Um, and I really like that the afternoon, the lunch block is a really nice, solid block of time um, that really gives the scouts the ones who need it, a little bit of time to maybe, or the adults, to go lay down <laughs> in their uh, mm -hmm. tent and rest. Um, but there's also always the parade field open with different activities for the kids who somehow still have energy um, and want to go run around and play and the Gaga ball pit. Um, and they make friends with scouts from all over. So that's kind of a nice open time for them to just go and just play and have fun, but also a chance if, for those that need it to kind of chill and have a little recharge time before they move into the afternoon. So um, I know that's sometimes a concern with the younger kids about them getting burnt out. So I do appreciate that we have that nice afternoon um, break every day. 
Yeah, Claire is referring to what we call our siesta time, uh, which is you know, Spanish for nap time and, and rest time. Um, so that's something that everybody definitely values. I know our staff as well. And, and Claire, like you said, we encourage that people use that time to kind of come back to their come back to their campsite, rest, recuperate. Some people do, you know, uh, pack time together with that. But um, we, we especially value, like, as, as Spencer was saying, we have these program blocks that are set for an hour period, six of them each day. And the first two days is, is pre-planned for you because we want you to get acquainted with the program areas, um, be familiar with the staff. And then as the week goes on, it becomes a little more of a plan your own adventure um, for, for that, along with Friday, uh, having some open block periods where people can, can roam. And if they want to be at archery all day, great, they can be at archery all day. Um, but we also value the, the opportunity to get to explore um, what the Goshen Scout Reservation has to offer. Spencer mentioned Viewing Rock earlier, which is an absolutely gorgeous hike, a little bit steep, but rewarding at the end, um, and a chance to have fun. Um, as our scouts get older and they go into scouts PSA summer camps, a lot of it is merit badge focused. And we're trying to encourage that, that chance to enjoy the outdoors, go free swimming for a period, go, go on a hike, um, take a nap, <laughs> because those things are important for a successful summer camp as well. Um, Claire and Spencer, both of you mentioned, uh, you know, when you were talking about Camp Ross during our first question, um, you know, watching scouts grow in their confidence and independence. Um, can you highlight some ways that you've seen Camp Ross help scouts grow as individuals, maybe become more independent and confident in themselves and, and be more active members of their community? So, um, my, you mentioned how, you know, when Drew went to Camp Ross and he was inspired that he wanted to come back and be a leader. And my older son, he has the same feeling. He can't wait till he turns 14. My youngest, who just had his second summer at Ross, um, during this transition summer, he actually was kind of wavering about, I don't even know if I'm going to join a troop. In his defense, he's been in scouts since he was three years old, dragged along to all the events. He was the den leader's kid. He's the cub master's kid. It's a lot in cub scouts. Um, so he was just really not so sure if scouts was something that he was going to keep doing after Cubs, but a week at Ross and getting to spend time with staff like Phoenix and Leo and all the other um, staff that are there and just you know, talking to them and hearing what they get to do and seeing what they get to do from working at Ross and just being in a, in a BSA troop. Now he's back on board and he's excited to see what it's going to be like when he transitions to a troop. Um, so I think that aspect of, you know, him getting to, and, and Ross does give them that experience when they have the open program days. That's, you know, they, have, they kind of start as cubs. They have to stay with their leader and walk around with us. But then by the end of the week, they grow and they're on their own and they're choosing their path. It becomes youth led, just like Scouts is supposed to be. Um, so that really, that really impacted him and helped him want to continue on in scouting. Yeah, on that point, I will say, you know, every pack runs things a little bit different. We all have the same program, but you know, how your pack operates, what kind of the culture is, um, can vary. And what I love about Scouts too is I feel like summer camp is where you really get the spirit of scouting. And I feel like the kids really get the vision of it, right? Because you're there with so many other scouts from a lot of other packs. You're getting, you know, those, the songs and skits and things that we share, the, the cheers. And I think just a higher vision of what scouting can be, right? Because maybe your pack camps a lot, maybe they don't, you know, there's all sorts of different activities, but this is a shared experience. Um, and where you really get a lot of that culture that has been, you know, passed down for years, if not generations. Um, and I think they see like the excitement of some higher adventures some things that you don't get to do every day, you know, like archery or um, some of the other shooting sports or boating, you know, that your pack may not be able to do or that we can't do at the, the Cub Scout level, um, at a pack level. You can only do it at council things like summer camp. Um, so I feel like it really expands their vision of what they can do in scouts and, you know, how much fun there is um, both remaining in Cub Scouts, but as well as Scouts BSA afterwards. Um, I know we were talking about uh, independence and confidence too. I'll just say on that point, um, 
every, as I mentioned, every scout I think I've taken um, has had, you know, some at least moment uh, of challenge throughout the week. Something where they, again, had to face a fear, had to, you know, navigate hunting with a buddy for the first time or dealing with spiders um, or, you know, not being sure how to do something or maybe missing home a little bit. And, you know, every time I've seen, you know, the scouts, you know, face up to that and overcome it. I've never had a kid who, you know, didn't find something in themselves um, and like the strength to grow and overcome that challenge. Uh, I have to say, it's really fun to to see them, you know, develop that that confidence that comes from it. And I feel like, you know, in a generation that faces so much anxiety, I think a lot of it comes from not feeling like they're competent, not knowing, you know, the value that they have in the world and scouting really gives it to them. And when you're out there at camp and you say, hey, I, I learned how to do this. <laughs> I did something hard. You know, they, they carry that with them when they're home and, you know, especially the rest of their life. Spencer, that was like a perfect segue into some of our next questions. So I, I want to continue going on that. But something that I, I like to, um, you know, I bring up when I talk at, at district roundtables and unit events is that, you know, what are some of the first things that we tell a prospective Cub Scout, you know, maybe at a joint scout night, um, about that organization, the things that they're going to do. We, we say, you're going to go camping and stargazing, and you're going to shoot BBs and archery and all those, those fun items. When we're talking to parents, of course, where we're Scouting America is a character and leadership development program. And uh, when we're talking with parents, we focus on that. When we talk to our scouts, we focus on the fun and adventure. Um, but so many of those things they can't always do on the pack level. So I love that Camp Ross has become a space for your, your units and, and your scouts to get to re-engage in some of those items, be introduced to them, um, and really develop as scouts and look forward to the rest of their scouting career. Because Cub Scouting is just the first step. They've got you know, a whole other world uh, that's that's coming up for them in Scouts BSA. Um, and you could probably say that the Camp Ross slogan, uh, aside from Ross's boss, <laughs> along with me, which is, uh, you know, their goal is to give Scouts a great week and an introduction to Scouting. And it sounds like for, for your Scouts, it's doing just that. Um, so... We'll say, sorry, even though I talked about, you know, people facing and overcoming challenges, 98, 99% of the time, like they're having a blast and off to the races and have no worries. <laughs> so it really is. It's a, a super fun week for the kids. Well, since we're talking about, um, you know, one, having fun and trying new things and then um, also overcoming, you know, some challenges, whether they're great or small. Um, I know that we've got a lot of first time packs or maybe packs that haven't gone to, to summer camp, or, you know, specifically at Camp Ross in a little while. And that means that we've got some parents that are going to be sending their, their scouts off to summer camp, maybe for a longer amount of time than they've been away from home before, you know, for the first time. Um, so what's some advice that you'd have to some parents who are nervous about sending their scout away to summer camp for the first time? I usually tell all my parents that in some ways they're going to be so busy at Ross, they won't have time to miss their families. Um, usually it's, there's just so much going on that, you know, they get caught up in all the fun and all the excitement that's happening. Um, so they usually do manage to not have too much homesickness, which is sometimes a little hard for the parents to hear. Um, they, but Another suggestion that I make, and I think uh, Spencer mentioned that he's been able to do it, is to come to one of the family camps that Goshen offers so that they can experience um, as a family getting to walk around and see what it's going to be like. Because um, there's one in, well, there's one in the fall and one in the, in the summer um, in May. So those are a great opportunity for a family to come and get to see Ross together. And then that can help with the transition of the scout then going to camp later. I agree. I mean, obviously the more experiences outdoors they have, both camping, hiking, et cetera, you know, the more prepared they will feel. Um, but I think, you know, as far as, you know, anxiety goes, um, it's probably much more on the parents than on the kids. As so Claire said, yeah, once they get there, they're having fun, there's a program, they're with their friends, they're with other scouts. Um, you know, I have rarely seen much homesickness um, while I'm there. And 
Um, so I think you can trust they're in good hands. You know, the staff are very caring and attentive. And obviously, you know, you've got leaders from your own pack, but, um, you know, if you're there as a leader too, you're usually sharing a campsite with others or other leaders are also nearby and they can be valuable resources as well. Um, so just know that there's a lot of adult support, a lot of professional um, support there from the staff. So your kids are taken care of. And it's a, what I love is because it is kind of a, a safe environment to roam and explore things and take on new challenges. But at the same time, you know, you're contained within this camp. You have people around and really every activity what they start with the first thing is we're going over the rules we're gonna we're gonna have fun we're gonna take on your challenges but we're gonna teach you how to do it properly how to do it safely and when we go back you know a little more quickly late as we get on later on the week and they know this um but we're gonna remind you every time like right these are the steps of how we do archery properly these are how we do bb's this is how we what we do with the buddy system at the waterfront right everything is structured um so that the kids, you know, know what they need to do to be able to have fun uh, and to do it safely. And so I think parents should rest assured knowing that, right, their scout is not just going to be left out in the wild on their own. And obviously every pack that goes does need some adult support there to make the week run. So there is always some chances for parents to come along and enjoy the fun of sleeping in that tent for a week. It's really not that bad. The cots are pretty comfortable. Um, I've also had a few parents where we've been able to, sometimes we had two parents who split the week, which is a really nice option that Goshen offers. So we've had some parents who said, you know, like, I really want them to go for a few days, give them that time to experience it and get settled in. But then I want to come have fun with them. So, you know, they come down by Wednesday. And then on the other side, we have, you know, the parent who says, well, I'm going to come and help them get settled in and then, you know, leave and let them finish out the week having fun. So um, obviously every, every pack leader knows their parents better and knows the kids and can kind of judge um, how much support and what options can are available and what options would best work for that group. But it is nice that there is the flexibility. Um, I even had one where, because of we're kind of far away, we're almost at the Pennsylvania um, area, part of like Northern Maryland. And the trip time, they wanted to come down and just stay that first night. And then they were going to drive back the next day. And so there was a day pass option for them to be able to stay for one night. Um, so it, it's really, there's a lot of options and Goshen really tries to make it work for everybody. Yeah, thank you both for bringing up some of our, um, you know, ways that, that parents can, can participate. So my, my next question was, um, you know, what role does a parent have, um, you know, before, during, and after camp? So before we dive into that, I, I want to touch on a few things, Claire, that you brought up. Um, one that, yeah, we do need, uh, you know, every pack when attending need what we call qualified adult supervision. So that's two adult leaders that are registered members of Scouting America. But uh, you within Cub Scouting, uh, you as a parent can attend without being registered. We ask that you take youth protection training. Uh, we feel that that's a very good practice. There's other trainings available on my dot scouting, like weather hazards training, which is also beneficial. Um, but there are, there are lots of opportunities for you as a parent to come and be involved um, and maybe get interested in becoming more involved in your pack um, you know, when you return from camp. Um, Claire, you mentioned splitting weeks, which is also, I know, one of Sarah's favorite things to do, <laughs> uh, where, where parents are able to, uh, adult leaders are able to um, split that week. And that really, we've had anywhere from two people split a registration where somebody attends Sunday through Wednesday and then Wednesday through Saturday. Uh, we've had three people split a week. We really want everybody that wants to attend to be able to attend. And we know that can be difficult to, you know, get enough PTO off of work sometimes. So if you're only able to make, you know, half a week work, that's great. We would love for you to join us for that half a week. Um, so let's go back to that question then. Um, in your experience, uh, what are the roles that, that a parent has you know, before camp, during camp, and then after camp? Well, I can lead off on this one. I will say before camp, obviously, there is, you know, working with the child to make sure they're ready, they have gone over the packing list and expectations and whatnot. Um, but also, 
think very important if you have any special situations that you make sure and communicate that with your pack leaders to make sure that they know what to expect, especially if you're not going to be there. Um, I have taken scouts, you know, with various, you know, mental health diagnoses um, and things. I mean, to take medication every day. Um, I had a scout this past summer who had limited mobility needs and used a walker or needed to be carried at times. Um, you know, whatever special circumstances or if you have any just other concerns about them, make sure that your pack leaders know because um, it's never fun to get there and discover something that you don't know. You know, if it has a food allergy or whatnot, that should all be listed on there. Um, and also just if there's any tips you have for, you know, working with your kids, ways that they uh, respond well, things they may be nervous about, um, you know, the more information that your pack leaders have or the other adults who are there um, or the staff have, um, they're better able to serve your kid. So make sure you do that uh, in advance um, so there's not surprises when you get down there. Um, and the other thing I would say is just express confidence in your kid and excitement for it. I mean, even if you are feeling a little nervous about the experience, um, I would communicate, you know, that you're excited for them to have this week. You think they're going to have a great time there and you have confidence that they can do it. Yeah, as tell parents before Goshen, their main job is they're the shopper. <laughs> you know, we give them the packing list and you know, make sure they have enough clean pairs of underwear and clean pairs of socks. Um, we, as a pack, we try to stress very much that the kid needs to pack their own bag for Goshen um, as much as I'm a mom, believe me, I, I want it to all fit and I want it to all look nice and organized, but Every year, there's always that moment where the kid doesn't know where their pocket knife is because they're not the one who packed it, and the entire pack explodes while looking for <laughs> the one pocket knife. Um, so we try to really, you know, again, encouraging that independence with the kids and having the parents support and help, you know, suggest how to pack and do things like that. Um, but that's, you know, their first role is helping purchase anything that might be needed and just like Spencer said, supporting them, encouraging them, getting them hyped up and excited um, about going. During the week, um, our pack does do a group chat where we send some pictures sometimes to keep them, you know, up to date on the fun stuff that's happening. Thankfully, we are not at a point where any of our cubs bring phones to Goshen. So they're not calling home. There's no, in there's no phone signal at at Ross anyway. So even if they wanted to, it probably wouldn't work. Um, but I've had a couple of parents sometimes who have sent a small little care package with me and asked me to give it to the scout midweek. And it had like a new deck of cards, a little extra cash for the concession stand and, you know, maybe some other special treat just as like a little midweek pick me up. Um, so that's sometimes a nice thing for the kids to get in the middle of the week. I know that Goshen does have mail. Um, my pack has never used it, so I don't know if Spencer ever has, but I see I see kids getting mail and I think people can send mail. So that's always an option if families want to explore that as well. And after is laundry. Well, all the mail comes to Sarah in my office every day. So we see it coming in. Uh, but you both, again, touched on some things that um, I'd love to elaborate on a little bit. One of our, our next topics was um, how can parents stay involved and, and what type of communication should they expect with their use? So I'll talk about mail very quickly. Um, we do have the ability to accept and then deliver mail to your scouts while they're at camp. Uh, we recommend that you send it, you know, at least, Sarah, would you say about a week in advance? Yeah, it's uh we're out in the country, so the mail is a little bit slower uh, than you would than you would get in the uh, suburbs or urban areas. Mm -hmm. So a week, week and a half in advance, and uh, you know, some people they'll label them on on what day it should be open. We deliver that to the the pack leader, um, and, and that's a way for for uh, we talked about helping boost their confidence and motivate them to continue on through in the week. I, I remember when I was first going to sleepaway camps on my own, uh, getting a letter from my parents made my day. Um, so Sarah, we might see an influx of mail this year, but that'll be great. <laughs> um, some other things that I wanted to to touch on is is um, um, you know, I mentioned the toolkit that we have, and, and that's going to be something that that grows as the year comes goes by. Right now, it's focused more on promotion and, and assisting you with aiding and, and getting ready for registration for Camp Ross. Um, but as time goes on, we'll start to add things like, um, you know, 
currently there is a packing list uh, that's available there. So you can go ahead and see what are the types of things that I'm going to need to to purchase or, or to procure um, before summer camp starts. It might make a really great Christmas gift if, if you know that, okay, your scout might need a new lantern or a flashlight. That's a great stocking stuffer right there um, or any other holiday season birthday gift. Um, uh, another part of that's going to be, um, you know, things that you should should do or talk with with other parents about um, as a unit before you head to camp. Spencer, you mentioned um, first aid needs. Uh, if there's any type of, you know, medication that somebody needs to be taking, the unit is responsible for that. So it's really important that you, as a parent, are, are letting the unit leaders know who they're helping to to provide care for for your scout during that week. Um, you know what they need to do, um, so there aren't any surprises. Um, we do have a trained first aider on site, um, and that's at Camp Ross specifically. But, you know, Goshen Scout Reservation has five different camps on the property. Uh, and within that, we have an overall health lodge director who is a uh, trained uh, EMT uh, or above. Sometimes we've had nurse practitioners on site, uh, generally an EMT, and they're able to provide additional care. Um, and, and we're in close contact with emergency services as well. Um, Spencer, you mentioned mental health. And last year we uh, we had our chaplain uh, that joined our ranks for the first year in, in a little while. Um, and I know that was a great resource having gone on lots of mental health calls with our chaplain. Um, everything from um, I'm missing home and I need to talk to somebody about it. And sometimes that's good for unit leaders when you need a bit of a break <laughs> and somebody else to talk to maybe. Um, and then we mentioned cell service and uh, we did have fiber optic internet that was installed at Camp Ross last year. Um, so uh, for people that, uh, you know, parents, if you're attending and maybe you need to check in at work, I know it's difficult to disconnect. We do have a leader's lounge um, as well as a dining hall um, that doesn't have air conditioning, but really good fans <laughs> and open doors um, that people are able to use. And we encourage you to use to, to stay in touch and do what you need to do and then get back in gear with, with your scout. So, um, let's keep moving on. Um, I just sorry, Elizabeth, yeah, when you mentioned, I'm, I wanted to mention the chaplain, and I couldn't remember which what the name of their position was. But I really did love the conversations that I had um, with the new chaplain last year, and it does tie into this topic because one of the big things that I remember her talking about was actually not saying homesick because that comes across that it's an illness and something that is wrong. Right. And it's okay, like it's an, oh, you know, I work in a school. So we try to teach kids that all feelings are okay. So it is okay to miss your family and it is okay to be upset about something. We just have to learn the ways to manage those feelings when we have them. And that was really like kind of like eye opening to me to think about it. Like it's just a common phrase. We all say it, oh, you're homesick. But that's there's there's other ways and we were talking about using the positive language and the encouraging and, and that is one of the ways if we if we talk about it that you know it's okay for you to miss us while you're gone we can't wait till you come back and we can hear all the great stories about everything you did um that can kind of help with the transition to going to camp absolutely missing home is the term that we we've started using more and more in the scouting community i encourage everybody here to to do that both in scouting and out of scouting and and you're right claire it's not a sickness um and it's totally normal to miss home um as somebody that lives away from my parents i miss them a lot <laughs> and that's that's normal um so yeah wonderful and uh, oh here's a suggestion that um our, our chaplain last year did we had one scout at um, a scouts psa camp that was missing home a lot and we had a long conversation with them and our chaplain made a daisy chain for them and so we did it for every half day because it's a little more exciting uh, it was like a loop paper so at uh you know lunchtime and the end of the day the scout was able to take off a loop of that chain and so it got shorter and shorter the closer that uh they got time to go home so we went to deliver that daisy chain to them at program and you know the day after we'd have this conversation they were like all too cool for the daisy chain but uh took it later <laughs> when, when their friends weren't around um, so I, I'm glad that that resource was was helpful to helpful to you, Claire, and I know to many other people. And something that we continue to look forward to supporting uh, at Goshen this year. Um, so let's continue on that a little bit. We've talked about um, you know preparing scouts when they're there. Do you have any other recommendations on how to um, on how parents and adult leaders can help to um, you know support their scouts as they're about to get ready to be away from home for a longer period of time? If not, that's okay. I know we've pretty much covered it. Yeah, I think so. 
Okay. I would just say, I mean, honestly, one of the things that's most helpful is really just let them get lost in the experience. I've only had a parent once who wanted their kid to call and check in. And the at first they asked, like, could we do it just like in the morning and the evening quickly? And you know, after the first day, it's like, do I have to call? Do I want to? And so, you know, then like they let it slide and it, it tapered off. Um, but really I think the kids want to be lost in enjoying the experience and um the more that they can just be in it and enjoy it i think the less homesick they'll feel sorry the less they will miss home right um because they are there with their friends um they're in and enjoying it so you know while of course you know your child best and you can you know negotiate those things with your your pack leaders um they'll say right i mean come to camp if you want to be involved in um in the camp experience there for that week and if not, do your best to be home, relax, and enjoy it, and trust that they're going to enjoy it, and you're going to be excited to hear lots of stories when they get back. Well, let's move away from missing home, because I don't want that to be, um, you know, our attendees, I don't want that to be their main takeaway, because Camp Ross is so much about fun and adventure and, and getting immersed in that scouting experience. So let's turn back to um, activities briefly. Um you know, what would you say was the most popular program area for your scouts when you were last at Camp Ross? I know we talked a little bit about critter time already. Aqua. <laughs> um, it's Shooting sports is a close second, but um, aqua, just for where we live, boating isn't something that we get to do very often. So for a lot of our kids, it's the first time they've ever been in a kayak or a canoe. Um, obviously, the water trampoline is fabulous. Mm -hmm. Um, and that actually was one thing I was going to, that popped in my mind about helping prepare. I know this is something that isn't necessarily geographically possible for everybody, but I have seen over the years that sometimes one of the holdups is that it is the lake versus a pool. And so some kids are a little bit more nervous um, about jumping in that lake to do the BSA swim test. So if your pack has any opportunities, either at coming to the family camps that are offered at Goshen, so it's at that lake, or do it to, you know, have any experience with a lake versus a pool that is within the Guide to Safe Scouting, um, it can be helpful because that can be, you know, hard for some of the kids that first time. And the water really isn't that deep. They don't care. Um, it's, it's just that it's different. And it's really warm, by the way. The Goshen Lake is warm, especially in the morning. I heard it's because of the the not the, the minerals in the water. It's warmer in the morning, but it's really nice. Um, it just for some kids because they can't see the bottom. That can be a little intimidating. So that's my only other tip to help get ready for Goshen. I do remember my first polar plunge as a scout and people, you know, the older scouts that were with me, they're like, oh, it's going to be freezing. You're going to have like icicles dripping off your face. No, it was, it was very warm, but it's fairly shallow in the swimmers areas. Um, yes. Uh, before we turn over to you, Spencer, um, if you're going to take advantage of, you know, going out lake swimming somewhere, please ensure that you're following the guide to safe scouting and utilizing um, safe swim defense and safety afloat. More information about that can be found on um, scouting.org. Um, so I, I just want to put that disclaimer out there before you go a little too crazy. Um, but that's a great recommendation. Lake swimming is a little bit different than a pool, uh, but it's so much fun. Uh, Spencer, any what, what was uh, the highlight for your pack uh, last time you were at Ross? Yeah, I would say, I mean, right. For most of the kids, aquatics is probably one of, if not their favorite spots. Some definitely like swimming more, some like boating more. Um, of course, the water trampoline is fine just because that's not something that you get pretty much anywhere else. Um, but then I do have some that right, love to sit at archery and um, BBs the whole time. And the nice thing there too, the last two years that we've gone, our scouts have been able to earn the shooting sports pin, um, which is now turned into the belt loop. Um, but so that requires a little bit more time on the range, a little bit more, you know, learning about um, how to use the bow and arrow or, you know, how the BB gun works. And so I think they really enjoy that time um, and being able to test their accuracy. And then, of course, they get to come home and like, at least with the, the BBs, you know, take their target with them. Um, and some of them really enjoy like the competition. So they'll do a golden arrow and a golden BB competition. And so, you know, you can try to uh, win the honors of, you know, being one of the sharpest shooters in camp. So I think the kids really enjoy that. And actually, there's kind of a lot of those little things throughout the week. So you have kind of like that standard program schedule, but there's a lot of little extra things. So for 
um, both leaders and kids, you know, they can earn the Diamond W Award and the Camp Adventure Award. And they're kind of like extra little things that you're doing in the side, including, you know, your service projects, giving a cheer, um, you know, visiting Camp Post. There's kind of a whole list of like different fun things that you can do. I mean, A, to help fill the time during siesta or in evenings or other things. Um, oh, Oh, there you got your adult leader challenge. I was going to bring that up. Oh, I love that yeah. patch. You helped design it. It was so fun. <laughs> um, there you go. Yeah, Claire's showing off her patches from last year. Um, Spencer, not to interrupt, but yeah, we've got um, some great adult leader opportunities like the adult leader challenge, which encourages you to be involved in, in at camp during your week there, be a member of that community, as well as currently we're working on um, broadening our adult leader training opportunities. Um, last year, we had some volunteers that helped us to provide um, Baloo training, because I know not everybody when they attend camp have that, um, as well as some introductory um, Scouts BSA training. So you can go ahead and get like um, IOLS, Introduction to Outdoor Leadership Skills, and working with our NCC training committee to, to have some more opportunities for adult leaders in 2025. All right, if you don't mind, I'd like to continue moving on because I know we're getting close to that eight o'clock time frame. And uh, again, reminder to everybody online, if you have questions for you know, myself, uh, Sarah, Spencer, or Claire, please go ahead and put that in the Q&A section. We'd love to answer those for you. Um, so we've talked a lot about the experience of Camp Ross, getting ready for it, um, you know, a day in the life. Um, so I know one of the things that our PACs right now are especially working on is the promotion uh, and trying to engage um, their, their scouts and parents and, and, and buying into their, their summer adventure for next year. So um, what are some tips and tricks that you both have found in recruiting adult leaders for attending summer camp? Well, I will say, you know, your most um, useful thing is, of course, those who have already gone. If you've been one year, um, then you can share the excitement of it and you know, hopefully have that rub off. Um, you know, say, of course, we want to give this experience. So start with the, you know, the parents of those scouts who were going to see if you can, um, you know, get some of them to come for a whole week or split the week, your done leaders. Um, honestly, you know, the earlier you start talking about it, the better. So people can plan it into, uh, you know, their leave plans if they need to take off of work. Um, and of course, you know, I would, I have it on the calendar from the beginning or pretty early on in the year. And then you want to start talking to your rising um, Weebelows and AOLs. Um, so of course, that's your, you know, your current bears and Weebelows about the opportunity to go to camp um, and, you know, start talking about it in the fall, <laughs> you know, working into your fundraising if you can to help people get there, um, let parents know when they're registering, if they need financial aid, that there is financial aid available, that they can apply for it and show them, you know, how I'm going to do that so you can hit those early bird deadlines um, for camp. And then, you know, just kind of, again, lay out that preparation schedule. So, you know, okay, yeah, we need to register this date, try to get everyone committed, even though people can't really join last minute if you need to. Um, but ideally you want them to prepare uh, early on. So I think both the, the kids and the adults know what to expect. Yeah, I agree with Spencer, word of mouth, just, you know, having having the kids come back and share their stories and the adults sharing their stories and sharing pictures amongst everybody just kind of inspires other people to want to go check it out and do it. Spencer, I appreciate you bringing up again PTO or leave from work and starting to talk about uh, summer camp early. Um, you know, we're, we're hearing from some of our packs that they don't necessarily have like an annual pack calendar. And so that's something that we're encouraging people to do is to sit down, you know, a few months in advance and, and map out, even if you don't know, you know exactly what week it's happening, you know that you will be going to summer camp and, and uh, you know, making that a part of like the expectation for your, for your pack to attend. Um, and part of the reason why we've started this webinar series and direct outreach to our, um, our, our DEN leaders is so that we can kind of retrain and reteach um, when we should be talking about camp. Um, because if, if you're waiting until February, that's great. Like we, we can absolutely, we'll, we'll get you along and signed up for camp, but you're able to build in that lead time and, and get parents to commit earlier um, by starting to talk about it and plan for it earlier. Um, I think we've got one or two questions left. Um, so we talked about parents. Uh, any other tips and tricks for how to engage youth um, or similar tactics to parents? I mean, I will say, 
as Claire mentioned, you know, your your youth who have been before are most likely going to be eager to go back and they're your best ambassadors because they're, they're so happy to tell the kids, you know, the younger scouts, oh, you're going to do this and this and this, and it's exciting. If you haven't been before, definitely look online. You know, we can find, or I'm sure we can find ways to share, you know, pictures and videos and things about like, hey, these are the things that, you know, we will be doing to build excitement um, because there was a lot of fun programming there. So I think it's all about, you know, getting them to, you know, look forward to lots of very concrete fun events and just emphasizing, hey, this is a special time where we get to do things that we don't get to do normally. And, you know, this is our chance, so you got to take it. But for Ross, because you've only got two chances to go um, when they're younger. But of course, and then after that, they can keep coming back when they're older to some of the other camps. Um, but I think, you know, both for youth and parents, knowing it's like, hey, you you only have a couple opportunities to make these memories. And so for the kids, it's probably motivated by the fun. And if you want parents to come, what I often tell them too is, you know, their childhood, it really is all too short. And what I love about scouting is it's giving you a chance to make memories with your kids that you would not have otherwise. Um, and so, yeah, maybe it's hard to take off some of that time, but you definitely won't regret it because you're going to have fun and you're going to have that chance connecting with your kid and other kids for memories that will last you a lifetime. Yeah, we have a lot of our own like pictures and things that we can share, but I do like the videos that the Goshen has on their YouTube channel. Um, I've used the GoTo Goshen um, YouTube videos just because they show some different aspects that maybe I, I didn't have a picture of, or it's just a quick, easy intro before I talk about it at a PAC meeting. So those are a great resource for a unit that hasn't been to Goshen and doesn't have their own personal um, pictures and information to share. They're, they're really great um, for the kids and for the adults. Elizabeth, you're muted. muted. Elizabeth. Oh, thank you. Sorry. I was going to say Spencer is actually featured in one of those videos <laughs> from two years ago, uh, which was specifically aimed at, you know, pack leaders talking to parents and other adults about, you know, the benefits of Camp Ross. So if you didn't get enough of him, <laughs> there's, there's more <laughs> that on YouTube. Uh, and also, of course, the, the Camp Ross toolkit, which um, especially for our, our packs that maybe haven't gone to camp um, before to Camp Ross uh, in a while, um, you know, there's a promotional trifold, there's a sample presentation with a recommended script as well, um, which includes some of those videos and fun photos. So um, you don't have to have your own experience in order to um, encourage other people uh, to, to get to take advantage of it. But uh, I'm, I know that it certainly helps. Um, well, let's close out with one final question. We've talked a lot about Camp Ross um, and, and how we're trying to help PACs to get summer camp on their annual calendar. Um, Claire and Spencer, are there any other summer camp opportunities or maybe just general camping opportunities that your PACs take advantage of throughout the year? Our PAC does go to our district day camp. So um, we use our district day camp for our younger cubs. And some years it happens that our day camp, our district day camp is the same week we're at Ross. So um, the AOLs and the Weeblos have to go to one or the other, but sometimes we have the opportunity to go to both. Um, and then just general camping throughout the year is a chance to get ready for going. Yeah, same. I mean, our, we of course do a, a spring and a fall camp out with the whole pack, but then I've got some families who really love to camp. And so, um, the great thing, at least in Maryland, is they've got you know, our state park youth group pass, so we can reserve any of the youth group sites essentially for free at the, um, the state parks. And so um, even if it's a little bit less formal for our summer one, they'll say, hey, I'm going to reserve it. And whoever wants to come, you know, we come and we do, you know, family camp out, um, you know, usually once a month throughout the summer. And then, you know, we try to go down for Labor Day family camp at Goshen, at Camp Olmstead. And so, again, if you want to do it, that's a cheap way to go down and experience Goshen. A bit of a drive, especially if you're on the Maryland side of the um, the district, but um, it's definitely a fun opportunity to see Goshen and to get down there with your families. And the nice thing is that the kids, you know, you can bring the scouts when they're younger. You know, I mean, really your kids of any age and don't even have to be registered scouts. Sometimes we brought friends with us as well and they can experience Goshen more informally. You can see the programming, you can see the setup and so that's a way too that we can get some of these younger scouts like a little bit of a taste of it 
and uh, you know they get to do some of the activities that they wouldn't otherwise get to do um, until they're a little older and can come to to camp on their own for the week. So for Memorial Day or Labor Day, if you're free and able to make the drive, it's definitely a fun weekend. Our family I did forget the other thing is, which shameless plug is, I actually do host a cubbery um, up in our district, and it's all. It basically the whole point of it is to inspire kids to want, it's like a taste of camp. So we do have an archery range on the site where we're able to do it. So the kids get a little bit of archery. We do some of the team building, building, team building challenges that they do at Camp Ross. I, you know, use some of those and some of the other activities that the scouts have gotten to do that I've seen done at Camp Ross or at day camp, we integrate into the stations. And I think there are some other districts that also host Cubberies. So those are a nice way to kind of give them a little bit of a taste of what they could do if they went to a full week of camp. I know that several of our districts host um, cubbery events. Um, sometimes they're weeblosaries and, you know, every, any ovary <laughs> combination mm -hmm. um, that are hosted throughout the year, especially in early fall and, and uh, you know, spring time frame. Um, family camp has got to be one of my favorite programs as somebody that gets to be there at every family camp. My family often joins me for it um, and is a wonderful way to, to introduce people to, to you know, scouting. Um, and Spencer, you mentioned that, yeah, you don't have to be a registered member of the uh, Scouting America to attend family camp. You do need one person uh, that is registered in your group. Um, that's a great way to, if you've got a you know, neighbor, neighbor down the street that has been thinking about Cub Scouting and, 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 and just scouting in general, well, this is a great opportunity for them to come and, you know, uh, take some action in, in that world as well. Um, Sarah, do we have any questions sitting for us in our Q&A box? We'll give people a little bit, but we haven't gotten any questions so far. Sounds so like an okay job then. <laughs> if anyone's got any questions, please feel free to type them up and put them in the Q&A. All right. Well, in the meantime, um, I'm going to do a little bit of a plug. Uh, I mentioned that this uh, webinar series is gonna be happening monthly, uh, this being our second installment. We're actually giving you a break in December because uh, we know that's a busy time of year for, for many. Um, and so our next webinar is gonna be on Tuesday, January 21st at 7 p.m. And uh, the whole topic is how to fund your summer adventure. So uh, Spencer mentioned earlier, uh, thinking of ways to fundraise. We're kind of at the end of our popcorn season. Uh, I know that some units right now, they're selling wreaths or, or may have other fundraising opportunities. We're actually going to have a presentation um, from our director of field services, Stuart Goines, and he's going to talk to us about camp cards um, as an opportunity for, for fundraising for your pack. And uh, as somebody that uh, my brother sold camp cards for many years. Uh, we enjoyed getting a free Domino's pizza every week. <laughs> Buy one, get one free is one of, it's, it's like a coupon card. Um, so uh, he'll be here to talk to us about um, some opportunities there along with um, some other updates that we have for you. All right, well, it doesn't seem like we have any questions coming in. Um, so that's that's more than fine. Um, Spencer and Claire, thank you so much for joining us for the last half, um, the last hour to talk about Camp Ross. You know, we could talk about it forever. Um, and I look forward to seeing you both, uh, you know, whether it's at University of Scouting or Family Camp again. Uh, to everyone that joined, thank you for your time. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at Camp Ross next summer. Have a great night. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon. Bye.